What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage. And on today's episode, we're going to be building the new Harbor Freight 212cc Ghost Engine. We're going to be turning that engine into a 9,000 RPM methanol drinking monster. So stay tuned and watch this Ghost turn into a Phantom. For this build, we're going with a billet rod for strength and longevity. We're going to go with a flat top 70 millimeter piston. A 308 cam for a great power band and high RPMs. We will be using a billet flywheel for less drag and safety. We're going to be running a 28 millimeter Makuni for this engine. We'll be using a Go Power Sports Stage 5 head. This head has been milled 65 thousandths ported, has large valves that are stainless with double valve springs, billet retainers, and we're using some black venom 1.2 ratio roller rockers and some chrome ollie push rods. We'll also be using Go Power Sports clear side cover to show off that flywheel bling. We have these MSD style coils linked below that come with a grounding strap for extra spark power. We're going to start off by removing the carb, fan shroud, coil, and heat shield. Next, remove the flywheel nut, starter cup, and the fan. Thread the nut back on the crankshaft to protect the threads and use a pry bar behind the flywheel and tap the crankshaft nut to remove the flywheel. Now I remove the remaining heat shields, valve cover, valves, and the head. Remove the side cover, cam, lifters, rod bolts, and slide out the piston. Remove the crank to test oil clearance on our new rod. Place the billet rod in some soft jaws and remove the rod cap. Install the bearings by lining up the notches. Place the crank onto the rod in a small piece of plastic gauge on the crankshaft. Install the rod cap and torque to 170 inch pounds. Start at 60 inch pounds and work your way up 20 inch pounds at a time while alternating from bolt to bolt until we achieve the 170 inch pound. Once torqued, we can remove the rod cap and check our plastic gauge squish. This process is showing us how much room there is for oil between the bearing and the crank. Using the included chart, I check the squish. We should be no less than two thousandths of an inch and no more than four thousandths. We are perfectly in spec, so now we can proceed with the build after scraping off the plastic gauge. I remove the gear on the crankshaft that drives the governor gear for less rotating mass.
I'm using a 70 millimeter flat top piston that I had Cerakoted to keep the heat in the combustion chamber. Install the oil ring spacer followed by the oil scraper rings on top and bottom of the spacer. When installing the first and second compression ring, make sure any numbers or letters are facing up towards the top of the piston when installing. Pull the piston and install one of the wrist pin clips. Make sure the long ear of the rod is on the same side as the arrow on the piston. Slide in the wrist pin and install the remaining clip. Now we can install our crankshaft into our block and oil the sleeve and the ring compressor. Make sure to orientate the gaps in the rings 120 degrees apart. Tighten the compressor as much as possible while leaving the piston skirts exposed. Slide the piston into the block and seat the compressor against the block by tapping it with a hammer. Using the handle of a hammer, tap the piston out of the sleeve and into the block. Pull the bearings and install the rod cap while repeating the torque process used before. Now we can install our lifters and cam. Line up the dots on the crankshaft and the cam for proper timing. I use a cut up side cover to check our rod clearance and cam clearances. Torque the side cover and rotate the engine around making sure nothing is coming in contact with each other. Our engine is good to go so we can move on to prepping our billet side cover. Install the oil seal and the o-ring on the side cover. The side cover comes with two thick and two thin shims. The billet side cover comes with four solid dowels. Install the dowels into the block before installing the billet side cover. I start off with one thick and one thin shim on the crankshaft. This is setting how much our crankshaft can walk side to side in the block. I end up having to remove the top solid dowel to make the side cover line up correctly with the block. We are shooting for 10 thousandths of an inch of end plate. If too little, we need to remove one. If too much, we need to add one. There was still too much end plate, so I removed the side cover using the included Allen bolts. This particular engine used two thick and one thin shims to achieve 10 thousandths in plate.
torque the side cover and install the oil drain plug. Now we can lap our flywheel with valve grinding compound to remove any burrs and mate the two surfaces. Make sure to clean off all the compound from the crankshaft and the flywheel once done. Using a crankshaft stop, I torqued the flywheel to 65 foot-pounds. We can now install our head and torque to spec. We have a video linked above on how to determine your push rod length. Install the push rods, lash cap, and rockers with the engine at top dead center. When you rotate the engine around, you notice the exhaust valve opens, then the intake, and then the exhaust cracks open a small amount. This is the compression release for easier pull starts. Make sure to set the lash with both valves fully closed. Use a 3,000th feeler gauge to set the lash. Tighten the adjuster to set lash. Once set, tighten the jam nut and check for a slight drag on the gauge for proper adjustment. I'm installing an MSD style pull with grounding strap. I placed a 40 thousandths feeler gauge between the flywheel and the coil and rotate until the magnet is under the coil. Press down on the coil and tighten to set the proper air gap. Rotate the flywheel to expel the feeler gauges. We can now install our heat shield, spark plug, fan shroud, valve cover, and carb. Since our head was milled 65 thousandths, it comes with a spacer for your spark plug so the spark plug doesn't come in contact with the piston.
Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to stay tuned to the channel where we install this on one of our mini bikes and take it out for a rip. We're also going to be running this thing on methanol very soon, so stay tuned for that. On this episode, we only used 110 race gas because we are getting a custom car built uh, from Go Power Sports for methanol. So stay tuned for that. Check out the links in the video description. They do help us to continue to do these videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys. We love you, and God bless.